A good day, this is Michael with Iconesis. Today we'll be doing a real-time workflow video shooting product photography with our LumiPad 360 LED lighting setup along with our Shutterstream product photography software. Um, I've also had a Canon camera connected via USB to my computer and that will allow us to control the software entirely through the uh, Shutterstream application. So as you can see here, that's a real-time preview of what my camera sees. Um, again, with our lighting, we have two front lights, uh, LED, high CRI, uh, daylight balance, as well as a backlight um, shining behind, as well as, as you can see here, it's a little acrylic riser, that just clear sheet of acrylic that we've uh, propped up using some boxes. So let's go ahead and zoom in our camera, nice and up close to our product. First thing that I notice here is that my my object is quite dark. It's We're a little bit uh, underexposed. So I'm going to go ahead and make some changes to my camera settings. I'm going to change my shutter speed. And uh, as I make those changes, since we're working with a Canon camera, it's going to show us the exact uh, exposure simulation in real time. That's something we've been able to build inside of our application. Uh, what I'm going to try to do is shoot this at maximum color accuracy. Looking at my product uh, versus looking at my screen, it looks actually quite good right here. So that's our first step. The second thing that we can do is actually adjust our focal point. Um, it looks like we're pretty well in focus, but users can start to make adjustments to their uh, their focal point using our manual focus tool to ensure it's going to be absolutely crisp. And then our third step will be to pre-crop our object. Uh, we simply define a crop marker around our subject. And simply when we're ready to shoot, I'm just going to hit my snap button. Within a second or so, that's going to capture and upload the image. As we can see, a very high quality result there captured in just seconds. So looks quite good for our first image. Let's continue shooting. As you're gonna be able to see on the monitor screen here, it retains our crop from shot to shot so that we're gonna get the exact same crop every single time for all our product images. I'll position my, uh, my shoe for, for angle number two and I'll hit snap again. Again, it's gonna show us that result immediately after capture, it's uploading. And uh, maybe we'll shoot just four different angles here. So maybe we'll do kind of the top down view Looks like we'll position our product well here. I'll hit snap, again capture the image upload. And then our last capture will be, well, maybe we want to show just the inside of the shoe. So let me just position it accordingly. Looks pretty good about right there. And again, we simply hit our snap button. So we've just captured four high quality results very efficiently. Um, so let's move into our editing process here and inspect all our images. So I'm going to select my four images in a batch process and enter again into our editing tools that's included inside of Shutterstream. Um, I'm going to click the eyedropper tool on the top right and if you look just to the right of this you're going to see an RGB color value and as I click and drag over the actual frame you're going to see that we've shot this almost on pure white. We have a very slight drop reflection right down here in the bottom right corner um, outside of that, it looks like we've done a very good job with shooting on pure white instantly. So there's a couple different options inside of here. First one would be to make a very slight levels adjustment. And maybe we also want to make a small color correction inside of here too. And let me just add just a tad here. And the last thing I'm going to do is just add a little bit of sharpness here. And the nice thing about as I make those editing changes, I'm going to hit apply to all. And in a batch process, what it's going to do is race through and apply those editing changes to every single image. So we can see their operation complete. Again, we can inspect each of these images and see that those editing changes had taken place for every single image. Uh, the next thing that we want to do, should we require actually this image cut out onto a transparent background, um, we can go ahead and do our background removal tool and I'm going to choose uh, one of our background removal options is using a solid color. So I'm going to go and say take out all the white pixels. And as we can see here, um, you do have a threshold slide bar. And if I crank that up too high, you're going to see it starts to actually eat into the product. Um, as you can see here with the three little, uh, three little Adidas lines. So I want to find a good optimal middle ground. And I also want to inspect my image. And as I can see, it's given me a very nice cutout here. Might even dra drop this just a tad. And after I've done that, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to hit apply to all. So in a batch process, it's going to race through these and automatically cut my product from the background. And we'll just give this a couple seconds as, as we can see their operation complete. So image one, two, three, and four. So now our very last step will be to output these images. We do have a batch save tool. If you just want your JPEG images, you can choose whatever default background you want to be the color. White is the default. Um, you'd simply rename your file. You can choose the battery size, battery name, uh, watermark, a, a whole list of options inside of here. We also do have our dynamic save tool. So I'm going to call this uh, football cleat. 
dash. It's going to name them sequentially, and I'm also going to go to a previously a previously uh, created profile that I'd actually created before we uh, before we started this uh, demo. And basically, what it is is I've said output each of these images twice. Um, once as a PNG, no resizing. Also, once as a JPEG at say. 1500 pixels wide. I'm choosing whatever folder or folder locations that I want to save to. Um, and then simply from here, I'm just going to hit OK. And that's going to batch save everything for me. Again, once as a set of JPEG images with a white background, and once as a uh, set of PNG images uh, with the transparent background retained. So we can take a look at this Adidas folder. There we can see football cleat. Um, again, the JPEG image that I can see here is uh, 1500 pixels. And we can open this one up here and we can review all these images. And then you also have your, um, just for viewing with Windows View where it shows with a black uh, background for the PNG. But that is in real a transparent background. So those are our four images that we just shot. High quality results captured in just seconds. Um, then you're on to shooting your next product. So again, your workflow would simply be your live view. Take your next product. And if you did want to ever mimic exact shooting angles, we have something called an image overlay feature in which I can actually remove my product. And you're going to see it after I've created an image overlay. So I can go ahead and position my next shoe or product, whatever I'm shooting, in the exact same, kind of in the exact same position there. So we're shooting a, a white Nike shoe. Um, again, we'll snap that. And just to show you how well the background removal tool works, when shooting white objects, we'll just again select this one or a batch set of images, enter back into our editing tool, background removal, and we'll choose the using a solid color. Okay, that's white. And as you can see there, a very nice cutout again. Let me just hit apply, and you'll see the results instantly here. Cut out automatically. So a very user-friendly, very efficient, and very affordable tool for creating professional quality results. I'll include additional information in the video description below. Let us know if you have any questions. Thank you.